Hey Pat, it's Midnight Designer and I wanted to put out a video explaining the Dishong Tower challenge mod that I made in conjunction with Sphere 2 and Pitch Silent um, and uh, explain what the mod's about and then give you instructions on how to install it if you are new to modding Seven Days to Die. So I have on the screen right now uh, timestamps so that if you want to skip ahead to um, just learning how to install it by yourself, you can skip to that point. Uh, if you want to learn how to install it using Sphere 2's um, mod launcher, you can skip to that point. Otherwise, uh, what we're going to cover is what the mod uh, changes to the vanilla game, um, what the rules of the challenge are uh, generally, and then we'll go through how to install it either directly uh, just by downloading the file and also by um, uh, using the mod launcher. But if you only want to, if you only want to hear about the installation, you can skip to those parts. Uh, just use the timestamps right there. Anyway, let's get started with uh, what we changed in the what the mod changes in the vanilla game. Um, the change uh, in the game from Alpha 17 to Alpha 18 uh, affected farming the most. When you uh, when you're trying to survive in a single building, the issue, the, especially the Dijon Tower, is uh, what is is uh, trying to get food and uh, plant fibers uh, to get started. So um, that is that is where you begin. And uh, one of the things that the the mod does is it starts you off with an actual stone axe and a uh, a mining helmet and a uh, light for the mining helmet that is for my friends who are content creators uh, that way they are able to uh, uh, you know light up the screen with the mining helmet without uh, having to up the gamma so those things are included that is the first thing we changed we took out the uh, starting note and the starting land claim block uh, to make room for those and because you really don't need them in this challenge because this challenge gives you a map that has is only the Dijon Tower uh, and nothing else. So, and this really is not a mod you can play multiplayer. So land claim block's not a big deal. Plus you can just make it later if you wanna use it for other reasons like in order to place it so you can move your uh, stuff to another location so you can make that later if you want it but you don't need it to start with and um, we needed the slot to add stuff that you were taken in so the the changes to the game um, the first set of changes I'm going to talk about relate to uh, the issue with farming and um, and making food more readily available so uh, the first thing we did was we changed the farm plot recipe to cost less flesh and less nitrate because, you know, if you're out in the world, you can get plenty of flesh uh, from corpses. You can get plenty of uh, nitrate from mining or also from corpses, but there's no corpses in the Dishong Tower. Well, wait, there's one in all 14 floors. I think there's one. Uh, so we lowered uh, the, the cost for flesh and nitrate in the farming plots. The next thing we did was uh, like food and farming related. Uh, we changed the recipe for food seeds. Not all the seeds, just the food seeds. The food seeds you can now make with a single item of the food instead of needing five. Uh, so you need one ear of corn, one potato, one blueberry, etc., cetera, uh, to make a seed for that. Uh, I understand in vanilla they did five because it's like it's a it's when you're dealing with a whole wide open world it's a different ba game balancing consideration but when you're, when you're in one building one plant one seed one food and also uh, we remove the level gate so you're able to craft food seeds right away and not um, need to 
uh, I think it's level three in uh, living off the land to get to food seeds. So you don't need to do that. Um, after that, um, you can get six plant fibers and clay from digging potted plants. And there's a 10% chance that the potted plants will give you a tree seed, which is going to be super important because your ability to get wood <laughs> in uh, the mod in the building is low uh, because every most of the wooden blocks break down to like two or three pieces of wood. And once you break it, that's it. So there's not a real good way to get wood, Be you know, because if you think like in the, in the regular world that uh, they added the wood piles, which is sort of the equivalent of those like uh, cobblestone blue blocks, those uh, those brick stone blocks that give you a bunch of stone and the uh, cement blocks that give you uh, the cement bag blocks that give you cement. Um, there's no the wood equivalent, which is the piles of wood log. Those are not in the Dishong Tower. So we needed to uh, make it easier for you to uh, to plant trees so that you could start getting a fairly decent wood supply going. Um, you can also get 30 plant fibers from trees, which just kind of made sense. Um, now as far moving past, uh, farming, well, actually, uh, there's an increased chance of getting nitrate in garbage loop containers and, uh, the fat Hawaiian, the Mo, which we know as the fat Carl and, uh, the female fat zombie whom we know as thyroid, uh, they can be harvested for rotten flesh and bones. So those, those two things we have added um, to increase like nitrate and, uh, rotten flesh and the bones are good because you need the glue for duct tape. So, so those are all related to our adjustments relating to farming. As far as like general food things go, um, we created a recipe where you can convert paper money, uh, to coins through the crafting menu. And that will allow you to buy items from the vending machines. Uh, there's a, you can conceivably get a lot of paper money, uh, as drops from the businessman zombie, as well as when you break up the couches and other furniture and in the desks, uh, you can get paper money, but in this mod paper money doesn't do you any good because you can't take it to the trader and convert it. So we decided to make it so there's a recipe uh, that you can turn uh, the paper money into dukes that you can then use at the vending machines. Um, so moving on to general, general changes we made. Um, one of the issues is obviously, well, I don't know if it's obvious. Uh, one of the shortages you'll feel doing this challenge is feathers. Uh, there, liter there are literally, I believe, no nests in in all of the tower none on the roof um none anywhere else uh so you are limited to getting feathers from vultures when they spawn uh, so if you go in an early game you turn uh, all the feathers you have into stone arrows because you want a ranged option in your gameplay uh, we wanted to create a way that you could reclaim those feathers so we added a recipe for stone feathers to be converted back or stone feathers, stone arrows to be converted back into feathers uh, through the crafting menu. So you're able to scrap it if you want the stone or you can um, use the recipe to get the feathers back, which I think is more helpful. We'll see how it goes. Um, we also added a glue recipe, but we didn't add a glue recipe. We reduced the cost of the glue recipe because again, in the tower, you're not going to get as many bones as you would if you were playing in an open world. So we reduced the cost to four bones. If you're making the, um, if you're making the glue in a campfire and two, if somehow you're able to get to a crafting station, there's no crafting station or uh, chemistry station. There's no chemistry station in the tower, but it's conceivable you would be able to make one because there is a significant amount of laboratory and medical uh, loot containers 
from which you could get uh, beakers and then you would be able to make the rest of the stuff. And if you unlocked it, uh, you could conceivably make a chemistry station. And now these are some changes that we made um, in order to allow you to complete the final task, which is you know by building the gyrocopter and flying off. Um, we added a coal recipe uh, because there's no coal unless you find it in garbage. We added a coal recipe. You can get one coal uh, from five wood in the campfire. We also um, made it so that if you rent there, are, I think there are two spotlights in in the tower and if you wrench those they will give you a headlight and there is a 25 percent chance that it'll give you a battery uh there's a whole bunch of those like yellow stand work work lights is what they're called um if you wrench those you have a 25 percent chance of getting a headlight and a 10 percent chance of getting a work light our theory was you know, if those things are actually on and lit and not wired to anything, they must run on a battery. So we gave you a 10% chance of getting a battery from it. Um, and then finally, um, you can get engines from wrenching an air conditioning unit. Um, there are no air conditioning units on the roof of the Dijon tower, but there, uh, there is a chance that some of the containers in the construction area, the, the kind that you break down to reveal, you know, usually for me, it's a toilet, but, um, there's a chance that one of those could be a, uh, an air conditioner. And so, uh, if you, if you are lucky enough to find one, uh, you can get a, uh, an engine from that. So those are the changes that we made to the Dijon Tower mod that uh, and how they affect Vanilla. And I, I, I wanted to go through it in a little detail because I wanted you to understand the reasons why we did it. We wanted to we didn't want to make the challenge easy, um, but we wanted to make it so it was possible to do uh, after the changes made to Alpha 18. So these are the rules to the Dijon Tower Challenge. You must enter the tower immediately. Um, and by enter, getting onto that front porch. You don't have to actually go through the doors, but you have to go immediately to the front porch. Uh, and after that, you cannot leave until you finish the challenge. Um, you cannot dig or mine under the... Um, under the foundation. Uh, if you were able to mine resources, then that would defeat the other balancing that we've done. And you could just, you know, dig away, I guess. I don't know. But you're not allowed to like dig under the floor and start mining. Uh, that is uh, that is not allowed. Um, but there are things outside of the tower and you are able to or allowed to build bridges out to those things. But when you're building a bridge, you can't support it by the ground. You can't like put uh, frames or whatever along the way so that your, your uh, bridge is supported uh, from the ground. You can only bridge out as far as the structural integrity of the blocks you're using will allow you to go. And that's it. So, and if, if, what you're on collapses and you fall to the ground, game over. Um, and if you die, this is a permadeath challenge. So if you die, it's game over and you start again. And the ultimate goal of the challenge is to survive, to build a gyrocopter and fly it off the roof. That is, uh, that is the ultimate goal of the challenge and that's how you win. Now, obviously, right, this, we made this up. Well, actually, it was made up a long time, two offers ago. These rules are made up. If you want to play it a different way, um, I know like there are a lot of people in Alpha 17 and in Alpha 16 who said, OK, well, you can leave after 30 days and loot. Well, that's not going to do you a lot of good because uh, if you're playing the mod, there's nowhere to go. Um, but, um, you know, if you want to make it so that every 30 days you can go out and like plant trees or do whatever, you know, 
the point of all of this isn't to create an orthodox version of of the challenge it is this is our version and you do what you want to do the whole point of it is to have fun so hopefully you'll do that and ho and hopefully uh you'll build a gyrocopter and get off all right so now we have talked about what the game is or what the mod is now it is time to talk about uh, how to install it. So first we're gonna talk about how to install it directly. Here is my website, heypats.com. Uh, link is in the description. Uh, if you uh, go to the mod section of heypats.com, uh, you will find the mod page. So far the only mod page it, or the only item on the mod page is the Dijon Tower Challenge mod, uh, but we'll have more. It'll be fine. Um, so, and this uh, this sort of goes through. These are all the rules, all the changes and stuff. All right. And so, what you want to do is click on this, and you'll download the zip file. And I'm presuming you know how to download a file onto your computer. So, this is that zip file, and then you would just want to open it. And here is the mod. Now, after you have the mod, whoop, let's move that over and then we will go to Steam. And here is Seven Days to Die. So we will click on this and we will go to Manage and we will go to Browse Local Files. Boop. And then once we browse local files, we are here. And what we are going to do, let me do it for you is uh, we're gonna put the Dijon Tower Challenge mod into the mod folder. So if you don't have a mods folder, you need to create one here. So you open this and then you just drag it over. Do, 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 do. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. And now once you have installed your mod, uh, look at that 8,300 hours. You're a beast. All right, we are going to open the game and let me show you how to start a new game. Okay, so once your game has all the way started, you will click on new game. And set everything to default. Now what I've found, and this is totally up to you, I turn this to not listed and one player so you don't get people you know showing up um, make sure everything is default um, the horde I found to be a little lackluster so you may want to turn the horde up a little uh, but uh, other than that leave everything vanilla and what you'll do is type your your game name and in the game world, select the Dijon Tower Challenge as the world. So there'll be a bunch of worlds here and one of them will be uh, Dijon Tower Challenge. And then just hit start and that's it. And you will immediately start on the world with the Dijon Tower in front of you and the items that you're supposed to have. Great, there we are, we've started. We are in front of the tower. We have our stone ax, we have our mining helmet, we have our mining helmet mod, and there is literally nothing else here. And then you proceed straight to here and get started. And finally, if you are not interested in going into your game folders and uh, messing with that kind of stuff, then you have the option of using Sphere 2's um, mod launcher uh, to launch the modlet. So what you will do is you go to heypats.com slash mods and down here uh, is a link that will take you to the mod launcher website. So you go to the mod launcher website and here is the download. So you will go, you will click on this, you will download and install the mod launcher. And assuming that you are able to do that, uh, you will then have uh, this. This is what happens when you open the mod launcher. 
So once you've opened the mod launcher, you'll go to uh, Steam versions. And once you go to Steam versions, you will click on Manage Modlets. Also click on Enable EAC. Um, and then you will find, these are all the modlets that you can install from the mod launcher. And if I was a stronger user of the alphabet, uh, Dishong Tower Challenge. So we will click on that and hit download. And then once that is downloaded, we, we will see it over here and are as enabled in our installed modlets. So once that is done, uh, we click close and then you hit play and it'll open seven days to die once again. And you'll know if the modlet is properly installed, if when you go to the, uh, when you go to pick a game world, the Dijon Tower Challenge is one of the world options. So if we go into here, new game, and it's here. So that's all you have to do if you're gonna use the modlet. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope you take the, the, uh, the time to try the challenge out. I really think you're going to enjoy it. It is a lot of fun. It is super addictive, you know, and it's one of those, it's one of those challenges where you want to play seven days to die, but open world seems like, you know, too much, like, what am I going to do? Choose your own adventure stuff. Uh, when you play something like this, you're kind of driven, you have a goal and you have uh, very limited parameters. Uh, about how to accomplish it. You have to play super smart. You have to play super careful. Um, and, you know, in this mod, you make one or two mistakes, you may have ruined your ability to uh, finish the challenge. So give it a try, download the mod, uh, watch me play either on YouTube or on Twitch if you want some pointers or at least uh, uh, some pointers on what not to do. Um, check it out. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit, a, hit the like button. If you think uh, there's other people that might enjoy it, maybe share the video with them. Um, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.